Hi everybody, it's Claudia from Create with Claudia. Hope you're all doing well. Today is my fifth episode of our Working Our Scraps Off series. It's a new, a fairly new YouTube series. I do one episode a month where we take scraps from my scrap bin uh, and make a new project. And they're short, they're easy, they're fun, and they're great scrap busters. And they're not always quilting related. Last month was a decoupage project, so I try to mix it up a little bit. And this month we're doing a quilt block. But before we do that, I wanted to get into something else. I wanted to do a quick shout out to Zappy Dots to show you the gorgeous top they gave me to take a look at. They actually sent me two tops, a pair of leggings, um, and I am in love with this top. I'm, this is what I'm wearing today. It's the uh, V-neck flare, and it's the Cafe Facet, and let me write, I wrote it down. It's the Row Flowers, this is Row Flowers pattern, and it's just a great t-shirt. I really like it. Number one, I like the V-neck. And number two, I like the longer arms. I do not, I'm not a fan of my uh, upper arms. I know a lot of people aren't, but um, this, I love that this is longer. And, and also the length is longer. I'll show you a picture of, a full length picture of me in it. But the length is longer too. It's almost a tunic length, which I like. I don't know if it's quite as long as that. I'm not sure exactly how long it is. But they sent me this one to look at. They also sent me a gray one. Uh, gray with some dots in it which is really pretty and that is called and I'll show that up on the screen too that is called Nightfall by Planted Seed Designs and lastly uh, well actually not lastly they sent me two other a few other things they sent me these gorgeous leggings and there's a picture of me in them and that's Jupiter also by K Facet I love those I don't wear them everywhere because they're kind of bold but I absolutely love them they're lots of fun and then last but not least they sent me these things and I zoomed in the camera a little bit for these last two items. These are, this is a needle minder. It's a magnetic needle minder. I absolutely love it. Uh, this is one thing they, they sent me as well to take a look at. Um, it's perfect, especially when I'm sitting in the evening. I like to stitch in front of the TV. And I used to <laughs> use the armchair, and I'd use that as a pin cushion. Uh, this is much better, and my family thanks me because every once in a while they'll find a needle like on the floor in the, pin, in the uh, armchair. And the other thing was this magnetic needle tin. Love this too. It has a magnet in it and it holds a lot of uh, needles in it too. So again, thank you so much to Zappy Dots for sending me those items. But now let's get started on our fun project for this month for the Working Our Scraps Off YouTube series. This month we'll be making a quilt block and I chose white and blue. Again, I've said that a couple months past. I have a ton of blue scraps. I obviously make a lot of blue quilts or a lot of quilts with blue in them. Uh, so I'm trying to use up some more of my blue scraps. I need to empty some of these boxes to make room for more scraps. But anyway, this is called a disappearing rail fence quilt block. It's a lot of fun. Once a year I try to do, or throughout one year, I try to do a scrap quilt. I just, it, it, I sort of, it, a little bit of a game to me. And what I do is I decide that I'm going to make a quilt. I choose a block pattern and I just use scraps. It's kind of the rule of my little rule that I make for myself that I only use scraps for my bin. Although sometimes I need to fill in like let, um, you'll see the quilt I made with this block last year. Uh, I, I did need to fill in a couple teals because I didn't have a lot of teal scraps. But today we're going to be making a blue and white version of this block. So what you're going to need, let me tell you what you're going to need. So I want to show you really quickly the quilt I made with this block. And I'm going to show you a full picture. I'm going to show you a quick version of it right now. But at the end, I'm going to stand up and I'll show you the whole thing. Because it's really, I, I'm really happy with this quilt. I really love it. And again, all scraps from those plastic bins, with the exception of a couple of teals where I cheated. Um, but here is the block. Hopefully you can see it. Let's see, that's probably not. Um, let me hold it up like this. You can sort of see this is one block, like so, and I use, I made this into like a rainbow uh, quilt. I used all different colors of my scraps and then um, put them all together. So like I said, I'll show you at the end, but this is the block that we're making, sort of this square right here, and it's easy and fun and a little bit different. It looks similar to, I think it's, I've seen like a disappearing log cabin or something like that, or some type of log cabin. But this is different in that it has a nice diagonal line right down there in the center. It also makes it a little bit trickier to put together when you're assembling the whole block. But it just use that quarter inch seam allowance, that scant quarter inch seam allowance, excuse me, and you should be good to go. So to make this block, you're going to need four rail fence blo uh, blocks. And to make one rail fence, you need, and the way I did it with mine, now you can do any color combination you want, but I like that white because it sort of offsets. And actually, let me pull that back. 
I like the white because it adds that interest there in the center and then the outside. It sort of sets off. It adds a nice little secondary pattern, and you'll see that. Uh, I showed you the picture um, on the screen, and I'll show you at the end in the quilt. But you could use maybe black. I've thought about doing that, like a fall one with the black instead of the white. I thought that might be pretty, too. But anyway, you're going to need for one rail fence block, you need three strips. A white one that's two by five. They're all two by five inches, by the way, all the strips. And I make, I, that made it easier for me because throughout the year when I got some scraps, I would just cut some two by five inch strips. And then you need two in the color that you're doing or whatever colors you want to do. And basically, basically, excuse me, you're just going to piece those together. It's very simple. And I have two here. I've already done two and I'll show you what we do next. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and piece these together. And you, to make one of those bigger blocks, the disappearing rail fence blocks, you need four regular rail fence. Alrighty, so here are our finished rail fences, the ones I just sewed. And I'm going to lay them like this with the white stripe on top. And then I'm going to show you, I already cut two just so you can see, get a good idea. Because you're going to cut these on the diagonal, but the trick is you're not going to cut them all the same on the diagonal. And when I was making my quilt, I actually did this a couple separate days so I wouldn't get confused. And I did one pile, I sort of separated my blocks, did one pile when I cut them this way and then one pile when I cut them this way. But essentially, you're going to cut them on the diagonal. Two of them for one block, you're going to cut two of them from the top left corner down to the right bottom corner, and that's if your white stripe's on top. And then for the other two, you're going to cut them diagonally from the bottom left corner up to the top right corner, sort of like I did with these two here, so you can see those a little bit better. So I'm going to do that really quickly. And just really careful with your trimming. Better put my glasses on. <laughs> okay, there's one. And it is a little easy to get um, mixed up with these. So like I said, I definitely uh, I actually did these on separate days when I made that quilt because I had a lot of blocks for that quilt. Okay. So here you go. Now here's this fun ready to be pieced together some more. Now what you're going to do is you're going to have play with these a little bit. And you're going to mix them up. And what you want to do is you're going to pair them up. And this is where it gets a little tricky. So, And you just sort of want to, I like to mix them up so that they're different fabrics together. You want to pair up so that the white is together like so, and the blues are together like so. And then you're going to sew down that seam, and you definitely want to pin when you're doing that. And you're going to sew down that seam a quarter inch, and you're going to do that with all of the pairs. So I'm going to pair this one up, and I'll sew those together. Let's see, we'll pair that one up. Because to make the larger block, you're going to need four of these units all together. Two like this. I think two like this, and then two like this. All right, so there you go. And you can see how it mixes up. And like I said, the more scraps you use, the scrappier this is, and you can really have fun with it and play with it like in, in my quilt. So basically what I'm gonna do next is just sew these together again like this. Uh, pinning, you wanna pin. I always lick my fingers when I pin. You want to get nest those seams and you want to pin right along there so you get a nice crisp corner. And uh, when I do that, I'll just go take this over to the machine. And when I'm done with that, you're going to press those open and then we might need to trim these down a little bit. Usually I ended up having to trim them down a little bit because you're cutting all different ways and you're sewing. A lot of it's on the bias, so they might stretch a little bit. All right, so here are our four blocks, and now we need to trim them down because, like I said, they do get warped. They do because, you know, you're moving, uh, the, you're sewing some of the pieces on, on the diagonal, that sort of thing. Um, I trim them down to four and a half inches square. They're almost there. It just needs a little bit of trimming. And I always start with this, the uh, inner corner, 
and that'll be my four and a half inch mark and you just want to make sure when you're using that's why this ruler is really great for that with the diagonal line I line that up on that seam it can be a little hard depending on the colors you're using like this navy is a little hard you want to give yourself plenty of wiggle room and you just want to boy it's really hard to see with that navy you know line up that diagonal line there making sure that you're four and a half inches it's very scant cutting it's not a lot you don't need to cut a lot let's see move it up a little bit sorry it's taking me a little bit it's hard to see it's also really humid today so it's kind of sticky <laughs> all right and then you're going to trim off the edges if you need to so you can see just a little bit of trimming and then you're going to put your four and a half inch mark there line it up here here and along the diagonal and then you have yourself one of the blocks for this disappearing rail fence and see that side you didn't have to. so there we go so there's one block ready to go and this is how I did this with my quilt is I didn't sew the I didn't sew the rail fence blocks together until I had all of these done and then I started really playing with colors before I finished putting my block together so let me go ahead and finish these guys Alright, so these are done. Let me get rid of all these little scraps here. And then, like I said, when you have a huge stack of these, it's a lot of fun. But we're just doing one, which is fun too. But <laughs> and then what you're going to do is you're just going to sew them on opposite sides, like that. Now, if you really were ambitious, you could play with those center ones, like maybe do a lighter and a darker, and then you'd have a real fun... Um, uh, area there and, and that might be really interested even give you more interest as well as this side maybe you if you want to do black and white or black and white that kind of you can really play with these uh, a lot it, it, the colorations are really interesting especially with that diagonal line you can almost make an optical illusion out of them and some of them on my quilted I ended up doing that without even trying but the next thing of course you're going to do is you're just going to piece this together and um, basically I'll this row this row and then piece them together like so so I'm going to do that and then I will show you how it turns out. The one thing I did want to mention before I start, you definitely want to pin at those seams. You want to get those nice, you can see here a nice sharp uh, seam, it might be easier on the white one. There you go, nice crisp point there like that. And you want to do the same when you're sewing them together. Okay, so they're sewn together and now they're gonna I'm gonna piece them even more so. The one thing I want to point out is I choose one direction to press in and I maintain that throughout the whole block or all of the blocks. And in this case I pressed towards the one the side with the white on the outside. Uh, it's up to you, but that way it's gonna make it easier when we put this block together because you will note that there's a this this is the tricky part of this block is that seam. That's that center seam and you wanna pin, pin, pin. And hold your breath when you sew, <laughs> especially when you're done and you open it up. I always like to peek, pull back and just peek real quick just to make... It's hard with the navy, I will say that. Navy makes it a little bit harder to see the see it. But And then what I'll do is I'll pin here, making sure it's nice and flush. And you're going to sew... Let me get a pin to point. Hopefully you can see this. You want to sew right where those, you can see where the threads, uh, the seams sew over each other. There's a point right there and you just want to sew on that when you're sewing uh, the, this length together. And again, pin on those seams.
Okay, so before I go to press it, let's see. We'll take a peek, make sure my... my let's see. Oh, it is... I'll take it. I will take that. Whew! That always makes me a little nervous. You get a little bump. Now, you can... When we press it, that'll go away. It should. You can also fold these over a little bit, just so you don't get that, that sharp bump in the middle. Um, I'll show you that in a second. But I'm going to go press this, and then we can take a look at it. Alright, so here it is. Here is my disappearing rail fence. Absolutely love it. There you can see it on the, the uh, diagonal, or set, excuse me, set on point. Uh, I will talk just to briefly about this center point. There is a little bit uh, of a bump there. You will get that. Some people are really good at like clipping the seams so that it opens up and it lays flatter. This is flat enough for my taste. Um, <laughs> a couple years ago, I started uh, trying to clip my seams and I'm envious of people that can do it because I cannot because I think about I had like 10 blocks to do and I think five of them I ended up snipping through the whole fabric and had to redo them and I vowed to myself never again um, so it's not a method I do but by all means look at it it does th make things uh, lay down really flatly it's nice but this is not that this bump is not that bad in my book and once it's all quilted and everything you won't you won't notice it at all in fact I don't even notice it now so here's the block eight and a half inches square when you're all finished you might need to trim it up a little bit I don't think this one actually matches just fine so I'm not going to bother with it uh, love the way this turned out great 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 scrap buster and I'm going to zoom out the camera and stand up and show you that quilt uh, how this block fits into that quilt but this is my disappearing rail fence eight and a half inch block this is my fifth project in our working our scraps off uh, series Okay, so it's really hard in this little studio, I just do this in the, my basement, um, to get the full length of the quilt. So I'm going to hold it up and then I'm going to flip it over so you can see the whole thing. And again, I have pictures up on the screen of the whole quilt in various settings. Because <clears throat> I really love this quilt and this is one that I'm not going to be selling. I'm going to keep this one. So here's the one side. And you can see how the different fabrics work. Here we go, I'm going to flip it over. One more, here's the lighter with the greens and the yellows. And last but not least, here's the long, here's the longer side. So there you go, there's my quilt. You get an idea of it, um, like clutching it. I just I love this quilt. And then here's the block that we did today. So I really hope you enjoyed today's project. It was a little bit different. It's the first quilt block we've done. I hope you try it and actually make a quilt out of it. I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. I always love new subscribers. And that way you'll never miss an episode. Just ring that little bell too at the bottom when you're subscribing. Um, and that way you'll get notified when I have new videos. For the Working Our Scraps Off series, I do di try, excuse me, I do try to post uh, every, the fourth Friday of every month. And again, this was episode number five. I also have a great Facebook group. The link is in the description to the video that you can join. It's a private group, but you can join. It's called Working Our Scraps Off. So head over there and, and take a look at it. Um, it's lots of fun. We're, it's a small group, but we're getting bigger. And um, people do post a couple pictures here and there. And it's a great way also to be notified of my scrappy projects. So thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Mm -hmm.